I'm amongst the last uh, of a breed of physicians who were trained uh, to take a good history, do a good physical examination, and then say to themselves, now, okay, now from the history and the physical, these, these are the findings. Now, what are the possibilities? What should I do? I will not sell my integrity. I will not lower my standards. And I will not sacrifice my principles, no matter what the pressures are. And there are a hell of a lot of pressures, I'll tell you that. Well, I've been teaching medicine for over 51 years. I went to medical school at Johns Hopkins University Medical School in Baltimore, Maryland. The opportunity arose for me to join Baylor in 1961, and that's when I came back to Houston, having graduated medical school in 1964. And so I've been here ever since 1961. I've been a professor of medicine at the University of Texas since 1988. I'm still going strong. The very first patient I had as an intern, the very first patient, I introduced myself to him and I shook his hand and five days later he was dead. And I was shocked and saddened and I cried. Uh, and, and That was the first time I cried over the death of one of my patients, but I have cried more than once. Because when you get involved you know, I teach this. I never did it because nobody asked me to do it, and I just wasn't mature enough to do it. But if you're really concerned about the welfare of your patient, and that patient dies, one of the most compassionate things you can do is go to his funeral. I've, I've spent 50, over 50 years honing my diagnostic skill. I don't, much, I don't know too much about therapy because I, I often say anybody can treat but not anybody can diagnose. You've got to be able to diagnose something properly before you treat it. Use your eyes. Look at the patient. What does he look like or what does she look like? What do you see? Uh, and if you, if you teach yourself to look at your patient, you will see a lot more than, than what, you, what you thought you were looking at. We see what we look for, not what we look at. Uh, and uh, your ears, your ears are very important, not only to listen to your patient, but to listen for heart murmurs or other murmurs in other parts of the body that, that can help you understand what's going on. Using your hands to feel, examine the abdomen, feel the testicle, feel the breast, uh, and you develop a sensory, you, you, you know what feels normal and what feels abnormal. Hearing, uh, tasting, uh, you know, in the olden days, uh, they would make a diagnosis of sugar in the urine by tasting the patient's urine. And I don't know if I recommend that, but, uh, you know, you, you, using uh, your, your, your nose, for example, the smell, you know, the old doctors could walk on, and I've done this not with typhoid fever, but the old doctors, old when I was young, could walk onto a ward and you got a patient with typhoid fever, don't you? They could diagnose it by the odor of the patient. And so th those are examples of using your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your hands. But most of all, you use your head. Uh, and you have to blend what you've got up here with common sense. And common sense is uncommon, period. You've got to be individualistic. You've got to ask yourself and others questions. And you shouldn't accept everything that you hear in medical school as being the gospel. Science owes its success to doubting all things. An example of that in medicine is Ignaz Simmelweis, who's the one responsible for really proving that, uh, that simply washing your hands with soap and water can prevent infection. He, when he introduced this concept in the mid-1800s, 
he was considered insane and placed in an insane asylum where he passed away. And yet we now consider him a hero. Perhaps the most rewarding aspect of being a teacher is to see your students grow. And that's why you're around, to promote learning. Teachers don't teach, they promote or stimulate learning. The most important role of an education of a person is that it belongs to the person. And my joy comes from finding the relatively few students who show a passion for learning, who enjoy learning, who don't mind working hard, which is essential to learning. So those of you who might see this tape, who feel that uh, they have to struggle to get what they want, that's good, because uh, that's the way if you will remember it. Uh, as Dr. William Bean, one of the giants of internal medicine, who's now passed on, said there's no magic capsule, there's no vitamin that you can take to become excellent. The only secret to becoming excellent is hard work.